It's been a really long time since I've recorded an episode. Welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel on YouTube. It has been a really long time since I recorded an episode and I'm going to catch you up and fill you in. Uh, but I first want to let you know that my co-host is here with me being very supportive on our rest day. There she is, laying on the floor, next to me, <laughs> as I record in our dining room. So, <laughs> yay! Um, that is Marjorie. Marjorie is our five-year-old Black Labrador. Uh, we have been uh, going on daily morning walks. I've been following it up with some runs. We've been trying to get active and in shape. And today is one of our just take it easy days, partially because of the weather. It was delightfully cloudy today with a small amount of rain showers. I wouldn't even call them showers, I'd call it just a sprinkle. Uh, but it has been sunny and hot with no rain here in the Pacific Northwest. So it was very nice to have a day of drizzly weather. As much as I love the sunshine and the summer weather, um, it's been really hot and uh, lots of forest fires and just like super dry conditions, which um, is not just happening here in the Pacific Northwest. Strange things are happening out there. So, um, first of all, let me just say, the sign behind me, this artwork, it says, wake up, drink coffee, hug dog, repeat. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, what, towards the end of July, today is July 20th of 2021. Um, to catch you guys up, before I get into the uh, knitting content. I have been doing quite a lot, so I'm gonna break it up. Otherwise, this would be a massively long episode and would then, honest to be honest, deter me from wanting to record another one because part of the reason I took this long break is because these past two school years have been really tough and I needed a serious break. Normally, quote, I, I can't even use the word normal anymore. Pre-COVID is what I'm going to say. Pre-COVID, my teaching job did not involve sitting in front of a computer for several hours, seven days a week, right? Uh, but that's what this past school year and a half has been like. Um, so I needed a break from computers and everything. And I like to play video games as a part of uh, my entertainment. I had to take a break from video games. Uh, honestly, I had to take a break from video games while teaching online because it was too many hours in front of a computer screen every day. I couldn't do it in my free time as well. So, <laughs> so I'm going to split up my catch up over a couple of episodes. So yeah, I took a break. Uh, much needed. I'm still on break. Uh, so this is the first summer I've taken off teaching in, well, since I started teaching in graduate school as a TA, right? Uh, so this has been a record-breaking year for so many reasons. And you know what? This year, I actually just took the summer off. My husband and I both took the summer off of teaching. No summer classes. A first for both of us. Uh, because you know what? We needed the break. And I feel 
so much better. <laughs> I can actually sleep through a whole night without having little, you know, while well, my brain is decompressing the day, remembering things, and then I wake up in the night going, oh, I can't forget to do this thing. Yeah, that's not happening, which means I'm officially on summer break. I also forgot what day of the week it was, which means I'm officially on summer break. This is how I judge summer breaks, is if I can sleep in, not care about what even what day of the week it is, uh, then I have decompressed, detached, had a moment to myself, and I could start to kind of come back out. Um, just super nice. I still need to know what day of the week it is so I can put the trash out. <laughs> so I can't fully forget that. Um, yeah. So we, um, right at the end of spring quarter, uh, by the way, <laughs> I am a, a college math professor uh, in the greater Seattle Tacoma area. And uh, we work on quarter systems. There's fall, winter, spring, and then summer the fourth quarter, right? Um, but uh, right at the end of spring quarter, so the end of the traditional school year in the United States, um, so our spring quarter ran late this year. We went all the way through to the end of June. Yeah, June 25th was the last school day. That following Monday I had to have grades in, so all the way up until the end of June uh, we were working. And immediately after that, we started our summer vacation with family and we went uh, camping in, excuse me, Bogachiel State Park, which is over on the Olympic Peninsula of Washington. Uh, we went over there camping, we went to the beaches, we went to Ruby Beach, Rialto Beach. Um, it was beautiful, it was amazing, gorgeous weather, it was totally delightful. Uh, we also went to the North Cascades mountain range and saw waterfalls and snow and wildlife, of course. We went out to San Juan Island. We rode a ferry out, spent the day on the island, even longer than we thought, because pro tip, if you come over to the Seattle area and you plan on riding a ferry, make a reservation. If you're going to an island, definitely make a reservation because some of those ferries filled up and had no room for extras and we had to wait for the next ferry. <laughs> so, reservations are, are a thing and you should use them, pro tip. Um, yeah, we made a reservation on the way to the island. Uh, didn't think far enough ahead to make a reservation off the island. Yeah, we did make it off the island. We did not have to stay the night, but it was a longer day. Although I will say it was really nice because we got to uh, hang out in one of the parks on San Juan Island. Um, there are several state parks um, and uh, we had to hang out, chill out, waiting for the next ferry for a few hours. And we were hoping to spot whales. Did not happen. Uh, but we got to watch people out of their boats, um, fish jumping out of the water, birds diving in to get the fish <laughs> um, and just the sun setting. It was beautiful. Um, amazing. Highly recommend it. Um, let's see, what else did we do? Oh, we went to the zoo in Tacoma, which is on Point Defiance. Defiance Point? I can't remember which order to say those in. Uh, but uh, we've been to the zoo and the aquarium in Seattle. Actually, I don't know that we have been to the zoo. We've been to the aquarium in Seattle. We were members last year, um, but we've never been in Tacoma. So we went there and it was awesome. Um, if you get a chance, if you're in the area and you're looking for a zoo and aquarium all in one and at a cheaper rate, uh, Tacoma. <laughs> at Seattle, uh, the zoo and the aquarium are two separate things. Uh, so you'd have to make two separate trips. But I know when I first visited Seattle, we did the, we bought the city pass where you get passes to different tourist attractions. And I think it included the zoo and the aquarium. So if you're planning on already doing other things like going up the Space Needle and going on a harbor tour, then you might as well do the zoo and aquarium through the city pass in Seattle. But if that's not your plan and you want, 
a really nice big open place to take your family. Tacoma Zoo and Aquarium was amazing. Um, yeah, it was great. So yeah, we got to go out and explore and be adventurous and hang out with family, decompress, not talk about work. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I also got a lot of knitting and spinning done. So let me grab those things to share with you. So I have finished quite a few things. Like I said, I'm going to break it up over a couple of episodes, maybe two, maybe three episodes, just because it has been a while and this would be a very long episode if I did not do that. So I'm going to share with you three finished objects today. They're all socks. So this will be the sock episode, the sock ketchup, uh, sock ketchup, sock mustard. So <laughs> I did finally finish um, this pair of socks that I uh, designed and I think I've settled on a name. So first of all, um, this, these are socks for my husband. Uh, I knit them out of the main color, this, this um, golden brownish color is from Yarnbox. It's uh, Holiday Eggnog colorway. Uh, I don't believe Yarnbox is dying and doing their yarn boxes anymore, which is really sad, but I was um, a subscriber and I did get a package every month for a little while uh, until they had to stop, unfortunately. The contrasting color is in, um, oh, what is it? Serenity Sock, <laughs> Premier Yarns, Serenity Sock, and the color is woodsy green. Um, P.S. I have a new phone, which is what I'm recording on now. So total disclaimer, if I can't remember where to look at the camera, um, I have a new phone. My phone uh, crapped out on me in the middle of playing a game. My phone was being really slow. I restarted it and it wouldn't restart. It just kept saying your phone is corrupt. <laughs> tried to get it repaired. It was unfixable. So I was forced to go buy a new phone. So I'm coming to you from a new phone, which I wanted to get, but not under those circumstances. So whatever, it is a thing. Um, but yeah, so this is a pattern um, that I have designed and I did finally finish these socks. They're a bit looser than I was thinking. I mean, they're pretty loose on these blockers. Um, and I am comparing that to a sock with a bunch of ribbing in it, so that's kind of unfair. Um, this is stockinette down here, not ribbing. But um, I, I think my uh, gauge was looser and maybe the yarn is a little bit thicker as well, but I do notice they're very loose on these blockers, so we shall see how they fit. Um, hopefully not too bad, but it's, it's a 64 stitch sock, which is what I usually do. So I don't understand why they seem so loose. It must be my gauge. I mean, what else could it be? So yes, these are finished and I believe the name I'm settling on, um, is uh, Icicle icicle socks because the ribbing up here makes me think of icicles hanging off the edge of the roof on a house um, and I know it's not winter here in the United States uh, but it will be once again it happens every year <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking of knitting up this pattern again maybe in um, some quote Christmassy colors um, maybe red green maybe more like blue and white like cold, icy, I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna knit it again, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, these are finished, which is great. Uh, I finished another pair of socks for my hubby. Uh, these are um, just some uh, ribbed socks. So I did a one by one ribbing uh, on the leg all the way around. So I did a contrasting color up here on the cuff. 
uh, but it's one by one ribbing here, it's one by one ribbing here, all the way around. Uh, heel flap and gusset, and then continue the one by one ribbing down the top of the foot, stocking it on the bottom, and then um, just a standard toe here. So it's not really a pattern per se, just a really basic ribbed sock. Um, and the yarn is yarn that I dyed uh, a few years ago. This is some of my, this is the first self-striping yarn I dyed. Yeah, this is the first, yep. And I was going for a Doctor Who inspired colorway uh, with Matt Smith, who is my favorite doctor. Um, and so it reminds me of his brown uh, jacket and like his fez. <laughs> Bow ties are cool, by the way. <laughs> anyway, I knit a pair of socks for myself out of this yarn. Enough left over to also knit a pair for my husband, which is really cool. So those are finished. And then I also finished a pair for a gift. <laughs> and I, it's a really hard for me to give these socks away because I absolutely love them. But <laughs> I already told myself these were gonna be a gift so I won't retract on that. Even though no one would know except me, I can always get more of this yarn. So this is uh, the same pattern as I just showed you. So there is one by one ribbing all the way around the leg, uh, heel flap and gusset, and then one by one ribbing carried down the top of the sock with stockinette on the bottom and a standard toe. So, Aren't these amazing? So these socks are amazing for a couple of reasons. Number one, the colors. So this yarn is Lion Brand. Um, I got it at Joann's, a big box craft store here in the US. Um, so this is Lion Brand yarn. Manny Petty is the, excuse me. So Lion Brand is the brand, right? Manny Petty is the yarn. Right, and then the color uh, is mittens, and I didn't make mittens; I made socks. So there. But what's so so cool is that um, yeah, I did reverse the stripes. So the two balls that I bought—they come in balls, uh, 50 gram balls of figurine weight yarn—and it's a nylon acrylic. Uh, it's a wool. Uh, nylon blend uh, <laughs> uh, but the balls were wound so that I knit one sock from the outside one sock from the inside and they are actually reversed as if you can see that the striping like oh my gosh how cool is that <laughs> so I just think it looks really cool the blue part um, showing up on the the gusset and heel flap together and then all the other stripes are reversed and I just think it looks really awesome. So this is a stunning pair of socks which will be gifted to a family member um, this Christmas. I just think they look super cool uh, and colorful. But yeah, so I finished three pairs of socks and I have another pair on the needles right now which will be finished possibly tonight. Um, so I'm knitting this pair of socks uh, two at a time. So they're still in progress. Yes, <laughs> there they are. Uh, so the yarn is, well, I should be consistent pattern first. We're doing the same basic ribbed sock. So uh, if, if I wasn't already needing a break from work and the overload of being on computers and sitting all day and answering emails and the same email from 17 different people. Uh, <laughs> I guess I also needed a break from being creative. So I've got what two finished pairs of basic rib socks plus another one that I'm going to finish today slash tomorrow. Um, yeah, I needed literally a break from like everything that I could. So, <laughs> uh, but I'm doing one by one ribbing around the leg, heel flap and gusset, carrying the one by one ribbing down the top of the foot 
and I am now to the toe so I will be starting my standard toe uh, decreases here. The yarn um, is one that I tried doing two at a time socks in before and I oh I think I was trying to use it for a pattern and you could not see the pattern in this yarn is <laughs> I don't know if you can tell but it's kind of busy um, so I ripped it out and it's been sitting in the back of my yarn shelves um, since then so I don't have the tag but I'm pretty sure because um, it came in these two separate um, it was kind of like a disc I think it was uh, balled out like this in a disc and you could clearly see the yellow the green, the, the blue, um, which I thought looked really cool. And I was for sure that the socks were going to do a bunch of pooling, which you can see it kind of is, but there are also places where it isn't pooling so well. Um, which I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I'm pretty sure this is by the same folks who do, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like a German, oh my gosh, Zauberball, right? I think it's by the same folks who do the Zauberball, but it's not Zauberball. So I'll have to look that up, put it on the screen or in the show notes or something. Um, anyway, this is a reminder. Take out the trash. I don't know if you guys can hear that. <laughs> this is a reminder. Take out the trash. Yeah. So I guess I could forget what day of the week it is because she'll remind me. <laughs> no, um, it is, uh, this week is just compost materials. And I try not to ship off my compost materials. I try to keep them from my own compost. Uh, but there are sometimes um, some things that we will send off to the city in compost, like um, scrap wood, or um, so I've been getting some leaves off of my kale plants that are just like covered in aphids. And I'm like, here city, you can have this as in the compost. And I will not keep those bugs around. My garden <laughs> anyway yeah if you couldn't hear it that was Alexa reminding me to take out the trash <laughs> uh, but yeah so the yarn is pooling which is super cool with these like wavy lines going on and you can see it honestly better on camera than in person like way better on camera it's like if you wear a striped shirt in person and in person it just looks striped and then on camera it looks like it's doing all this wavy crap. Yeah, that's kind of what's happening here. You can see all the wavy crap, but in person I, I can't see that as much. Anyway, uh, this sock no longer has blue. Like it's just the green and yellow. There's no more blue. And you can see that in the ball, like it is just green and yellow and there's no more blue. In this one, there is still a little bit of blue, but anyway, so, <laughs> so they're not quite matchy matchy, but you can tell they are in a set together. So that's cool. Um, but yeah, so these are almost finished. Um, the recipient will be Michael, my husband, um, cause I'm having fun knitting socks for other people right now <laughs> and that's okay. So yeah, I just have to do the toe decreases, weave it ends, and I'll be finished with these socks, which I would like to do before I go on another trip. I'll tell you about later. <laughs> um, so that's the knitting I wanted to share with you was um, socks. Uh, but I also have some spinning 
and I come ill prepared because I don't know my yardages or things. So I'll just briefly show it to you. Can you hear Marjorie licking her arm? She's like, oh my gosh, you're talking about me, aren't you? <laughs> So I did finish the first ounce uh, of spinning uh, my Turkish drop spindle. So I had finished um, the first project I put on that drop spindle and I me immediately started a second one. So I have this um, four ounces of merino uh, dyed in this lovely uh, green color. and. Um, I split it up into one ounce sections. So I have four bundles, one ounce each. Um, so this is the first ounce. I have the second ounce on the spindle because when I finish one, I immediately want to start the next. Uh, so this is the first ounce. I love it so much. I think it's a beautiful fingering weight um, spin. Apologies, new camera, uh, new phone, using as a, a camera. So let's see. Focus. If I tap the screen. Will that work? Not really. What does that button do? Oh, it takes a picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, yeah, so it's this beautiful soft green. Um, of course, spinning it so thinly means that these beautiful dark spots are getting spread out. And it just looks like a solid color instead of having that those dark splotches in it so but I am still very very happy with this spin it's um, beautiful fiber to work with it's just a delight um, I'm a little bored with the solid green <laughs> I went from solid gray to solid green and the reason I did that is because I was kind of, I had recently purchased some beautiful fiber with color variations in it, um, like different colors, not just light green and dark green. <laughs> um, but I wanted to like go back and use the older stuff first, and this is older, but um, oh well. <laughs> so that's what's going on. I did finish this first ounce, uh, so I need to count the uh, yardage on this and throw a label on it so I know what this is and when I finished it and how many plies. This is a two ply. Um, I watched a video on plying a two ply on a Turkish drop spindle because with the previous uh, project I did um, ply on the fly with a chain ply. So what I was doing is I was spinning out a section and then chain plying it winding it on here, spinning a section, chain plying it, winding it on here. So when I took off the turtle, the finished bob of, of yarn, it was actually yarn plied and ready to go. Um, so what I'm doing this time is I'm spinning singles on here, wrapping the whole ball up with singles, and then take the ball off, take the strand from the outside of the ball, strand from the inside of the ball, and ply them together which I thought was going to turn out to be a horrific mess, and it did not. Obviously, it worked. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting a two-ply, which is allowing me to get more of a fingering weight rather than sport or decay. So having two plies instead of three means thinner yarn. Yay! Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. I'm so happy with it. I've got the second ounce going um, on the spindle, and yeah, it's just delightful. So, 
Uh, I talked about going on another trip. Yeah. <laughs> so Michael is actually on his way back to uh, Washington right now. So at the end of our summer vacation with family, uh, Michael drove our niece back down to Texas. So he took what was it, four or five days to drive from Washington to Texas, which I think, oh, Texas isn't that far away. You know, we talk to my family and his family all the time down there, and it just doesn't feel far away. Oh my gosh, it is. So, <laughs> so he drove her home, um, and he's flying back now. So I will pick him up tonight, and then in a few days, in like four days, I will be flying down to Texas to visit my family. So I'm going to hang out with my parents and my sister and my niece and nephew, and we're going to have a little holiday together in Texas. Why am I flying down to like the one of the hottest places? Because that's where my family is. <laughs> So I will slather on the sunscreen. Uh, we're planning on going to Padre Island and going to the beach and hanging out. So it should be fun. It'll be a proper summer holiday vacation, proper, like in the movies where you go to a beach, hot, warm place and hang out. So that will be fun, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so. That's what I've been up to. Um, I feel so much better after taking a break. Um, I know it's something I tell my students to do all the time and then I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> so it's been really nice to actually take a break. I'm sorry it meant I also had to take a break from you folks, but technology was really just interfering with my life. I felt overloaded with being on the computer all the time, learning new software. I just needed a break. And I know there are lots of you who totally understand what I'm talking about, probably feel the same way. And I hope that if you get a chance to take a break, I know not everyone has that luxury uh, as a, an, as a teacher, I actually have the luxury of taking like three months off of work, which is a blessing. Uh, and I'm enjoying it immensely. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, if you get a chance to take a break, I hope that you do. If you haven't already, um, it has been a really long year for everybody. Um, but uh, yes, I will. Uh, in the next episode, I think what I want to show you is, ooh, ooh, actually, you let me know in the comments. Let's do this. Let me know in the comments if in the next episode you want to see a blanket parade because Alicia's been knitting blankets, or would you like to see what's been going on in the garden? I will update you on both, but I want you to help me choose the order. So would you like a blanket parade or an update on what's been going on in the garden because a whole bunch of garlic is sitting in front of me. <laughs> All right, so just let me know in the comments and also let me know in the comments how you're doing. Hopefully that you're doing well, what you've been up to. If you've had a chance to take a break or if you're looking forward to a break, whatever a break means to you, if it means soaking in your bathtub with a glass of wine and reading a book for two hours, uh, I want to do, by the way. <laughs> now I want to do that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to stop now because this goodbye has been rambling on for too long. So thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate all of you out there. So stay safe, be well, and enjoy your craft, whatever it may be. <laughs>